So next, I'm going to welcome our young global enabler, Sophia Zima. Um, Sophia is a correspondent and a journalist at Russian magazine. She has been conducting general education lectures on ecology and conscious consumption for the population and business sector. She will talk about how can environmental journalism save the world. Welcome, Sophia. Young Global Enabler, Sophia Zima. Uh, hello, everyone. Again, um, Sophia is a correspondent and a journalist at Russian magazine. She has been conducting general education lectures on ecology and the conscious consumption for the population and business sector. She will talk about how can environmental journalism save the world. Welcome, Sophia. Hello. Young Global Enabler, Sophia Zima. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, Sophia is a correspondent and a journalist at Russian yeah, Magazine. Can you open the YouTube. Yes, yes. How are you? Did you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I think there was some technical issue. Can you hear me well now? Yes, now it's okay. Okay, I'm going to give the remote control to you, and then please take over the slides. Okay, uh, let's start. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sofia Zimai, as you already know, and I'm an environmental journalist. This year, I graduated with a bachelor's degree from the St. Petersburg State University, the Institute of the High School of Journalism and Mass Communications, majoring in international journalism. And there, I, I had a short elective um, at the university called environmental journalism. And I was really looking forward to it. I thought, hooray, they finally start talking about ecology at my university. What a great news. I can improve my knowledge and professional skills. And at that time, I, already, uh, I was already working in the main department of Subakaru. Uh, this is a large magazine that's published in 21 cities of Russia. And I was disappointed when I realized that I had more journalistic experience uh, in environmental topics than my teacher. I had mixed feelings, actually, because I studied at one of the best universities in Russia, the fourth best, to be precise. And it dawned on me, but no, it doesn't mean that I'm too smart or something like that. I just wonder it. How can we create a bright future if we haven't prepared people who can talk about this bright future? And one of the main reasons of the environmental problems is the lack of environmental education in all the areas of human activity including the media. And the level of environmental culture in society depends on the work quality of the media, because publications have the opportunity to influence people, inform a new consumer. And there is a question, what is the power of journalism? Let's imagine you have a genius idea, uh, a secret way to help humanity survive, but it only works if it passed on to others. No one will find out about your new technology unless you and others spread it. In addition, modern technologies can work without an advanced user with a new environmentally oriented mindset. And this is where journalists come to the rescue, ready to spread the information and um, educate others. Perhaps without journalists and social media, this salmon wouldn't happen today. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Sorry. And the main, uh, but I want to talk about the power of journalism. Uh, well, the main rule of journalism is to spread information and talk about problems. But how do we do it? What do we want to achieve? Just informing a person about the fact that our climate is changing? Okay. Or do we want to change people's life for the better? And this is where, in, this is another question, how the environmental journalists can dramatically achieve people's lives to be more sustainable. And my view has changed on environmental issues. And I want to share my, my methods of disseminating environmental information, new tools that can help prevent the environmental uh, ignorance. 
Through my work, I have tried to break the vicious circle of disaster approach of covering environmental issues by also focusing on positive changes and success stories. This constructive journalism or solution journalism attempts to challenge the traditional use of attention grabbing negative headlines by arousing public interest. And there are encouraging examples that give hope for the future and encourage everyone to do their best. Many people know how the bad situation in Russia is with transition to renewable energy sources. And honestly, we are sitting on the oil needle. Moreover, for example, did you know that the area of all landfills in Russia is equal to the area of Netherlands? Just imagine. I can talk about it endlessly, but what for? I think that it's much more interesting to celebrate what is, what is already developing and to support these initiatives. And I, I made an article in my work about the St. Petersburg team, 99 Recycle is the name. And they were one of the first in our country who began to manually make accessories from recycled plastic. In this article, I brought up a problem of plastic pollution through the story of the guys who created a project to solve this problem. And we supported this startup project and helped it grow and become larger. These guys recently won a grant and now they are building a special 3D printer uh, that can create bus stops from recycled plastic. I found this project when it was so small and I saw the potential it had. And I'm happy to know that I was able to tell their story to others for bigger support. And I think that people are already so tired um, of loud headlines and negative information and they need to know that we have the ability to make this world a better place. And I prefer to give it to them. Unfortunately, in our country, the concept of, uh, the concept of sustainability and environmental conformity is not um, developed like in Scandinavian countries or European Union, and there are no such conditions. Um, all types of waste are still disposed into one common waste bin and then taken to a landfill where recycled simply build up and don't decompose for decades. I reach out um, and educate a large number of people from my environmental text, lectures, and projects. For instance, I wrote a special guide how to separate waste for the population in Russia. And this material, um, and this material reached more than 20,000 people. Just imagine, 20,000 people already know how to live differently. And uh, they already have instruments for this green changing. In, I want to say that um, we are all consumers of something and our decision will affect the way our society works. Uh, in my work, uh, I often use uh, the concept, uh, um, sorry, but mm -hmm. something uh, stopped on presentation, sorry. Uh, in my work, I often use the concept of global global plus local in the coverage of environmental topics. For example, let's imagine there is a global topic zero waste, but I, I will talk about it directly. Um, for the audience, global issues seems like something big, distant and invest. But when readers see a local manifestation of global theme, they can see this topic in different light. That's why instead of talking about zero waste, I write about new local projects like uh, 99 Recycle, as I already tell you. And um, uh, I can give you another example. I wrote an article how a St. Petersburg citizen has created a Clean Games, a project that annually removes hundreds of tons of garbage in 207 uh, cities of Russia. And now this project um, is helping to collect garbage from contaminated areas in 17 more countries around the world. And it's important to understand. It's, um, that, um, it's important to understand for people uh, the need to feel that these green projects are in changes are so close to them and they can touch it and become a part of new bright future. And it's not hard. And one more tool which I use in my work 
Sounds like that. If you want to talk about problem, tell a story. And I want to tell you my story. It sounds, um, uh, I call it one month challenge. I'm drawn to ecology and creativity, and it seems to me that a regional non stondon approach can influence the masses. And I conducted an experiment and I didn't throw the garbage out of my house for one month. Even if I die somewhere, I brought um, all my waste to my home. And it was necessary to understand how much I how much only I am generating. And um, then I created a photo project with my own garbage uh, that clearly shows how much only I am consuming. Uh, on, the, on this page, you can see the results of the first week. And I have four weeks, actually, for photos. Look, please. And when I was sorting the waste with my hands, trying not to breathe through my nose, I was very disgusted. But I got myself thinking, stop, why should I repel by what is part of me in my, in my life? This is my waste uh, and I'm directly related to it. It's the same as we were disgusted from, with myself. And after this, I wasn't sick anymore. <laughs> and um, it's really useful to get closer to your waste. Stop being afraid and smell and drinking it like something nasty. Garbage is the same product that was from transformed because of you and it's part of you and it's your responsibility you know um you see the uh, the results of the third week and you know that i can i could write to my audience hey dear readers and consumers you are eating um drinking and producing too much like me stop it but you know it doesn't work um, and that's <laughs> it's um, it's logical that it's, that it doesn't work. Uh, and I set up an experiment for myself, delve into the chunk story of my daily life, and um, talk about my own failures. That's what works, and it's much more interesting um, because um, personal experience is closer to people, and then something um, the abstract reasoning on global topics. And um, on the, on this page, uh, you can see the, um, the the all results results of the one month, and you can see how the garbage is absorbing me. And you know that in my editorial office, I'm the youngest journalist. I'm 21, and I start to promote environmental issues and encourage my colleagues to promote environmental um, environmental topics, where even when it's seen, it's not profitable. And honestly, our audience isn't, isn't interested um, in such topics because, um, because it's too hard. It's too hard for them. Um, they are not always ready for such information. But my mission as a journalist is to educate my readers and fuel their interest and them and environmental awareness. We shouldn't chase quantities um, in views and we have the ability to influence and we can shape our consumer. I believe that uh, any change begins with the change in our consciousness and with the help of new way of thinking. And this is possible not on the field of technology and but in my field, which I represent, I mean education and journalism. And today in my work, I'm trying to convey the values of conscious consumption through my work, uh, through my lectures, through my projects. And I also advise the help businesses become more environmentally friendly and um, help people to live more consciously. And I want to urge all journalists and, so, and the social media to reconsider the direction in which they are developing. The future is in environmental journalism because ecology flows in all of us. Any field, politics, fashion or science carries an environmental connotation within. And sustainability is not only about climate change, renewable energy sources or air pollution. Uh, sustainability is another thing. It's about how you brush your teeth in the morning, throw out the trash, what, what clothes you put on on your child. Sustainability is every day you live and 
journalists have a chance to affect the way this day goes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia. We have one question from our audience that would like to ask you. So they think like you are doing really inspiring and meaningful work and their careers. What is the biggest challenge when you are doing the environmental journalism in Russia? And what's your plan for next steps? Mm -hmm. um... I think that uh, being here, um, being here on the summit, it's already a, a good step for me, uh, because um, uh, the level of environmental journalism, uh, like environment totally, is really low in our country, and I'm really uh, um, taking <laughs> taking care about it, but. Um, you know, I want to make uh, my own projects um, because I know uh, how to, um, I, I can find the special instruments uh, for connection uh, with people and uh, actually with a young generation which can, um, which have, uh, which has power to make uh, big uh, changes. And uh, um, you asked me about uh, one, uh, about uh, the most, um, uh, the, uh, the hard challenge for me and I think um, one of the big challenge for me is um, uh, to change uh, to change conscious uh, mm, yes to change conscious um, in our mentality great um, we also have a new question coming on um, so they're also um, they're curious about what's your take on the new social media and its role in the new age in regard to the environmental journalism. Mm, I'm sorry. Um, can uh, you, you can find the question in the chat box. They, they were curious what's your take on the social media and its role in the new age. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ah, um, I think, I think, uh, um, sorry, I just, <laughs> I, I can't see, uh, the, the chat. I don't know. Maybe it's something, uh, some problems with, uh, with connection and, um, Um, so they're asking, what's your take on the social media and its role in the new age? For example, Facebook and Twitter, how are you going to leverage these tools to um, promote uh, environmental journeys? And what do you see as the advantage or disadvantages of this tool in regard to your profession? Mm -hmm. mm. I think that... Um... Mm. Mm. I need to think. Um, I think that uh, mm, if if you want uh, to know, to know more to know more about um, social media and uh, the role uh, in this um, new age, uh, we can talk about it. Uh, personally because for me it's a little bit hard to to explain um, to, to, exp to explain all what I want to say because of language I'm sorry for it <laughs> okay no problem um, I think uh, there are also some, some questions coming later and uh, would you please like to answer, type your answer and answer the question in the Q&A session and we are going to start on the next speaker. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Hi Sophia, we are having a few questions coming um, from Max Wong and Daniel Carr. Um, can you please answer this question? And I think we still have three more minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I see just uh, one pre uh, one last question uh, from 
from uh, about Facebook and Twitter and uh, no more questions, but you can, um, you can, okay. you can. Uh, okay. So there, Max one is asking, uh, thank you for your lovely talk. For a nation with as many natural resources as Russia, how would you convince the country to transition to renewable energy? Um, it's a really good question, but uh, it's so hard to talk about it. Um, I don't know what um, what our government uh, will <laughs> think about this um, um, because um, renewable energy sources. It's um, for our country. It's so. Um, hard to uh, to to use um, to use it because um, we still sitting on the oil needle and um, it's it's a really big problem um, and the renewable energy sources um, um, they need to um, uh, they used to have a, a, um, they need to invest some invest some investors and more investors investors uh, which is in inter which interested in uh, uh, renewable energy sources but um all of this uh, um depends on a, on environmental educate education because um if investors uh, don't know um, don't, don't know that uh, we uh, need to put our money and invest in uh, new energy uh, and if if uh, they don't know uh, about this uh, uh, that we need this uh, and why we need this they can't uh, understand what for they need to pay for it it's just uh, mm, it's something like that. Uh, actually, we have some so tiny steps uh, on the south uh, part of Russia to um, uh, in in some uh, south part of Russia we uh, use we using the solar panels, but um, it can't work. Uh, it, it can't work good because um, our um, <laughs> because our population um, actually don't know how to how to use it uh, um, with a good influence and there is a big problem and uh, uh, um, it's a com compre com comprehensive uh, problem I think so <laughs> thank you okay. so much for your okay. answer uh, because we are running out of time and um, please yes. Feel free to answer the question, last question from the Daniel in the chat box and type your answer in. And I think we're going to invite another speaker um, to continue our session.